Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the Brandon Creative Stage. Uh, my name's Patrick Burgoyne. I'm the editor of Creative Review. Um, if you've been to some of the other sessions, you will know this already, so forgive me for repeating, but um, we are using the Slido uh, platform for questions this year. So during this, the presentations, during, the, during our debate, you can submit questions at slido.com using that hashtag, and they will come up on the screen later. <coughs> People can vote for their favorites, so the ones which are at the top will get more of a chance of being, being answered uh, as we uh, open things up later on in the discussion. But um, we're here today to talk about uh, marketing to older people. Um, and as someone who will uh, be 50 in March and will therefore officially be an older person, um, I have a vested interest in this, um, as do, I think, my, my panel. So I'd please uh, just like um, to ask each of you to introduce yourselves in turn. Um, Rosie, if we could start with you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Rosie Arnold. I'm Deputy ECD at advertising agency Bartle Bogle Hegarty. <laughs> Hi, I'm, um, I'm Michael Cutbill. I've been old for quite a while now. <laughs> and um, I, as you can perhaps see, I was the marketing director at uh, the AA and Saga, both of which uh, have quite a lot of old people in their books. My name's Jane Cunningham. I have a site called BritishBeautyBlogger.com. And um, integrated into that is another site called The Beauty Plus, which is a site for older women. And um, I'm across all social media platforms. Hello, uh, I'm Rebecca Valentine, and I launched Grey Model Agency this year, which is a model agency dedicated to 35 um, years and above. So, in terms of... Um, let, let's start with terminology and, and definitions. There seems to be this kind of default although well, maybe not in the modelling world, that if you're 50 and above, you are somehow an, an older person. And we've heard all sorts of names for this group, whether it's you know, grey or whether it's silver or whether it, or, a, a lot of pejorative terms when people come to talk about older people. So can we just talk about how you feel about the way we, we refer to older people? And is, is there, has there emerged a more kind of acceptable term to talk about those of us who are getting on a little bit? Um, Rebecca, maybe you could, you could start. Um, I think the first problem is calling them a group because what you're talking about are people from 40 to 99 and beyond. Um, and I think that it's very difficult to refer to a group of people who share 50 years between them as one entity. Um, so I think it needs to be broken down into who those people are, what lifestyle, what background, what choices... Um, you know, and where they are now and stop thinking of them as just over 40 or over 50 and think of people in terms of what they're doing, what they've done, what they can offer. Well, I work in the beauty industry, which is one of the biggest culprits in the world for making older women feel like shit. Um, when I think about the terminology they use to describe women my age, and I'm 50, um, when I look at the products, uh, words such as sagging, old, wrinkled, grey, jowly, I mean creased. I could go on and on and on. Um, but actually, when we look at our English language, there, are, there really aren't any terms that are complementary for older women. I mean, name me one. And we have to exclude things like cougar, which just implies that women are sexual predators over 50. And I, I'm not. I just like a cup of tea instead, please. But, you know, so we are very short on words. And what I'm hoping that one of the things that could come from this is that clever marketers can start coming up with uh, words and terminology that aren't derogatory. Yeah, I mean, I... I I really struggle to find a word that, uh, that works. Um, in the States, the word senior is not pejorative. There's, a, there's an authority, there's a sort of warmth about that, but I don't think that exists here, so I don't think that really works here. So personally, I think just the straightforward descriptive is the best. So I think over 50s feels the least uh, pejorative of the of the terms that are out there. And I think that's why this session is about the over 50s rather than about the grey or the silver. Mm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. I completely agree with your point about 
um, you know, you hit 50 and you're lumped in with everybody beyond. And, you know, in advertising, when I'm asked to advertise to people, I'm not asked to, you know, the target audience is 20 to 45. You know, you can't imagine grouping those people together. I'm 50. I can't imagine being lumped in with somebody of 75 because we're, we're going to be in a very different stage. So I think actually looking at people and their stages and, and their interests would be more helpful. Um, yeah, and people, people who are older have had time to get more diverse in a way because if you think about it when people are in their early 20s then everybody wants rental accommodation and to go out in the evening right I mean that's sort of true of everybody but by the time you are over 50 then you've had the chance either to be rich or not to uh, have a, had a family or not to have built up particular interests, or not. So there's this kind of diversity that's going on all the time. So it's particularly inappropriate at the end of life, I think, to, to homogenise. Mm. Jane, just picking up on you, what you were talking about with, with the beauty industry, we have seen some older women appearing in, in advertising yeah. and, and being made spokespeople for, for some beauty brands and some fashion brands, whether that's yeah. Charlotte Rampling or Helen Mirren or Joan Didion. How genuine is that, it's particularly on the fashion side in terms of, is it that they want to um, appeal to older women or is it more just it's because the older women have the money, so way. they've suddenly realised, oh, hang on, hang on one yeah. moment, we need to start speaking to um, an audience that, uh, in a way that they want to be spoken to, rather than... Uh, dominating the conversation, which was all, it, which is always, you need to look younger, you need to look better, you know, buy yourself more beautiful. It, it's all, it's all that using role models who are much younger or just completely inappropriate for anti-wrinkle, let's say. And so terminology has crept into the beauty industry, such as pro-aging. Um, I use one of the terms I use is age inclusive uh, to describe a product but really for want of anything better there just isn't really. I haven't thought of anything better but I will. But um, no, it, I was at a very big brand in a Tuesday night and I was talking about the um, over 50s hair market and the, what an opportunity, <laughs> what an opportunity and I was like, oh god you know, really it's, it, you just, it, I think it's about being more respectful and understanding that ageing does not... It used to follow, I don't know if you agree with me, it used to follow a much more sort of a, a pattern, I think. In my mum's time, certainly, ageing followed a nice little... So you got to certain stages and you just hung around there until the next stage. But we, we're so diverse now as the groups of 50 and above. I mean, completely diverse that you can't really, uh, as we were saying, categorise the over 50s, I've been sent a press release recently for someone my age group talking about me as a, it was to do with health, a senior fitizen. And I just thought, if you were in front of me, I would punch you. <laughs> because I, it's so rude, it's unbelievable. But a senior fitizen, that's me. I just can't, I'm not even fit. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> There's something complimentary about that. No, there is not. <laughs> no, there is nothing. Um, Re Rebecca, have you, have you noticed the difference in terms of what people are asking for uh, casting-wise? I mean, we, we have seen, for example, brands like M&S and, and things like when the, the Guardian does some of their fashion stories, they try and represent people of different, you know, through the ages, if you like, which mm. does feel good in some ways, but also feels a little bit like box ticking in, in, in some ways. Um, I think for um, a very long time now, um, brands and ad agencies um, and marketing people have been peddling the concept of age that is so outdated. You know, it is the retirement home. <coughs> and waterfall cardigan the cruise. Yeah, when I was coming out here on the tube um, and I saw Age UK um, poster up of a little frail old man mm. with a Christmas cracker party hat on his own, and I think that um, Saga are also guilty of this, where you're presenting an idea of age that's fear-driven. Yeah. Um, and because people, you know, quite like to think of myself as young at 43, <laughs> um, but, you know, because you're presented this, um, this 
um, a, you know, this perception, sorry, of age um, constantly through the media, through advertising, through marketing, it makes, it creates a separation between those who are doing and those who have supposedly done, gone to bed, gone and watched TV, knitting, doing whatever, you know, living in a, in a retirement home. And so this huge gap has um, grown between the, you know, the 50 plus age group whatever that means, and people like you who haven't quite got yet there yet but are trying desperately to sell to them. And I think actually what needs to happen is a bridge and discourse so that you, know, you, you start to get to know people within this demographic. The fact that you know, uh, Sylvie, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but the ballerina Sylvie Guillaume, um, French ballerina, she's just about to do her final tour. Um, this year, and um, she's called it um, something like life in progress, um, because this is not where she stops. She's 50, she's been a ballerina for 40 odd years, but it's life in progress, and that's what you're missing. You're not recognising that these are the people who were on the King's Road, you know, going to the drugstore and hanging out with all the hip people that you like to kind of croon on about, um, and they were creating this world, this popular culture, whether it's music, art, design, advertising. Um, and you're forgetting that these people are very, very cool, cooler than you, much cooler. Um, and because you don't have the discourse, you're not understanding, therefore, how to reach them. So, you know, you need to realise that this isn't, you know, I want to stop seeing the John Lewis ads. I want to stop seeing the Age UK and the Saga ads where it's presenting old age as, you know, over, sedentary, you know, lonely. It's not that. That's not my experience when I'm dealing with a whole wide range of people who are models, but they're not just models. In fact, modelling is, is something else that they do. You know, these people have been... Um, dancers and business owners and designers and I mean you name it any exciting thing that you can think of that's what they've done and this is what we need to present for this age group not the grey hair and by the way grey is ironic as a name for a model agency <laughs> not literal can I just I just I really want to agree because but I also feel with everything that you've said but I also feel that marketing tends not to be um, driven, uh, run by people our age and unless you are 50, which I, I would have to tell you when be, then you leap into the 50 plus category, is so similar to 49 that I can barely tell them <laughs> apart. It's really, really very close. Um, that nobody, there is nobody of our age creating for people of our age, particularly in the beauty industry. And, uh, you know, it is, it's slightly shocking to me that I am being spoken to by 25-year-old... Um, I have the, per the perception is being sent to me of, like, let's say, a 25-year-old man's idea of what it must be like to have wrinkles on your skin. It's like you have nothing you can say to me that I cannot say better myself. I think that's a... You know, that is, I am always the oldest person in the meeting yeah. now, so the clients and the people I work with who are generating the ideas are much younger. And I also think there's a massive misconception still out there that you'll get them when they're young. So if you speak mm. to everybody and target a younger audience, that they're going to stay with you and stay with your brand for life. People don't behave like that anymore. They do not, you know. particularly in beauty, where there is so much choice. And actually, my finding is that women are moving away from brands that are consistently negative. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, I was going to say, because there seems to be a bit of violent agreement, so I would, <laughs> I would tend to disagree, uh, which, why, why wouldn't I? Because uh, I've come from a couple of brands that have done quite well with, a, with an older audience. First of all, just to clarify the Age UK thing, Mm -hmm. That campaign is about befriending older people. So it's not <coughs> depicting, you know, the consumer as an older person. It's asking, it's, it's just direct charitable appeal. I, I understand saying, its yeah. sentiment. I think yeah. that um, the result is not what they're trying to achieve. The result is putting distance between, you know, the fear of growing old and that person who absolutely needs help and needs 
you know, needs no, friends and, their, and doesn't need to be lonely. organisation's mission is now very much, has been turned into something about stopping loneliness and loneliness being the, uh, the kind of blight of our times. Um, so, yes, I agree. It's, it's not... Uh, it, you end up with a, a vision that's not positive, but it's certainly uh, totally understandable in terms of the, that. The uh, sentiment's that right, thing. but in order to, you know, reduce this enormous space between being aged and not being aged, you need to embrace the concept of aging as a positive and great thing. You need to be interested in people like my model, France, is 83 years old, um, and everything she's done, you know, she's had lots of press coverage over the last two, two months, and all of it is about how she's become a model, age 82, and the brilliant things that she's, you know, the brilliant commission that she's managed to win. But nothing about where she came from, what she's done. And, you know, in, in order to, for, you know, to, to be peopled at an older age, at 60, 70 and 80. It needs the younger demographic to embrace, to learn, to want to know, to inquire, you know, what that person's life has been about. And in the UK, we're very behind on that. There's this, there's this very kind of arrogant attitude of, well, you know, if you haven't made it by the time you're 40, you're nothing, and, you know, you sort of have to go and jump off a cliff. And what's interesting about having started at Grey is that it's the fashion industry who were most um, receptive to us, uh, which I wasn't expecting at all. Um, and within the fashion industry, it's the Far East who are embracing us more than the West. So, um, you know, for example, we were at London Fashion Week with a very young, um, you know, face-to-watch Chinese designer... And um, I was speaking to somebody yesterday about um, another fashion brand who were backed by um, a big Chinese company. And they're interested in doing exactly what I'm saying, which is bringing the young and the old together um, to bridge that gap and to show that actually there are mo mo many more similarities than differences. And so from a marketing perspective, that's, you know, I think you need to look in that direction. How, how honest are brands when it comes to the um, sort of relative age of their consumers in terms of... And also, how honest do we want people to be? Do we want to see people like us in the advertising and the communications, or do we want to feel like we're part of a younger crowd? I mean, Rosie, when you get the briefs in from, say, car companies, yeah. are they all... Yeah, do they, I mean, know, they, know, they know their average, the average age of their driver is 55, but, think, but do the briefs say appeal to 25-year-olds? Yeah, and, and I think that it's back to that getting when they're young I was talking about earlier. Mm. But I, I would love to see a car company have an older woman getting out of the car at the end, and that would appeal to me. And it's interesting because I really like the fact that Marks & Spencers are using an unknown but rather beautiful older woman as opposed to a celebrity. Or, and, and some other brands use very, very quirky... Um, you know, Kate Spade had a campaign where they had a wonderful model who looked fantastic, but I felt she was being used as a kind of, this is really out there, crazy yeah. uh, use of a model, as yeah. opposed to a more genuine, you know, this is actually somebody who, yes, they're gorgeous looking, yes, they feel aspirational, but I, I like to see that. And I actually am beginning to feel alienated by, you know, companies constantly talking to a much younger me. I, I don't want to go there again, and, I, and it makes me feel that brand's not for me. Yeah, um, I, sorry. I, you know, I was going to say, I think the, um, the use of older, of older models in a very self-conscious way, for me, doesn't really work. And so the best advertising for older people is advertising where you don't think it's for older people, yeah. right? And uh, there's definitely... Oh, so, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I believe that, in general... Um, older people will tend to want their marketing to be a little more specific and to have a, a little more, uh, be a little more direct than um, the majority of, uh, of, of consumers. And so, 
if you can get some, some uh, non-ageist uh, ads together that uh, manage to combine that um, with somebody who is, uh, as you say, kind of ageless, I think that's the most effective thing. And I was scanning through and thinking, what is there at the moment that I think is good? And I quite like the uh, BT ads that uh, Willem Dafoe is doing, if you know, if you know those ones. Because they're quite quirky and funny, but at the same time, there's quite a sort of strong product, um, product message behind that. And there's some, some offers. And the, the opposite in terms of how not to do it for um, older people, I think, would be, uh, you were referring to them, the kind of big stable of Adam and Eve emotion type ads at the moment, which are um, the SSE uh, orangutan and obviously the John Lewis, uh, the John Lewis ones, because they're just pure emotion and no, uh, and there's, a, there's, there's sort of not much beef in them really, and that's, that's not going to work for, the, um, for, that, uh, for that age group. But uh, at least neither of those ads are specifically going out and saying, you know, we are for old people, we are for young people. So, uh, there's a couple of questions I'll just, just pick up on the panel behind, which I think are alluding to a similar thing, which is, could we not just ignore age and instead focus on people's interests and attitudes and, and trust that they remain constant no matter how old you are? I think, it, again, I, sorry, I keep going back to beauty, but that, that is my area. You know, blogs uh, are the bridge between the brand and the consumer, and we do a really, really good job at talking to the brand to the consumer about brands and about how they make their, their decision making. And it's really obvious that time and time again, beauty brands will pick, uh, because blogging and vlogging is quite commercial now, they will always pick the young, pretty ones, or almost always, unless it's a cream for 50 plus, in which case I am wheeled out every <laughs> single time. And more often than not, I say no, because that's not really my mess. You know, I don't want to be seen to be promoting the very thing that I I'm, you know, my whole philosophy is, is you know, don't worry about it. Everything's, everything's fine, really. So it is, they always pick the more beautiful. And actually, it, almost aside from age, they pick the, the prettier ones always. Never mind the stats, never mind their reach, never mind their relationship with their readers. Looks are absolutely everything. And it's really, it's actually gutting to see because this is generally a business that is, um, if I think about things involved like marketing, PR, um, even sales, it's young women talking to other young women and only using pretty women or young women to talk to them. And I just think, fuck. But I keep finding myself really struggling when we keep talking about the over 50s because I've got this, you know, what happens to, to me when I'm 70, which is very different, I hope, than what, where but I am now. And I just feel like, it's young yeah. women talking to old women. Yes. And so yes, all yeah. their fears about what being 50 might be like, and it's fine, it's really fine, yeah. are, are come, come out in, in advertising yeah. and marketing. Yeah. So we need to make being older more aspirational. It is quite so, cool. I'm know, really happy yeah, to I, be 50. I like yeah. the sentiment of having an ageless campaign mm. or an ageless brief. That would be so refreshing. Yeah. I'm so bored of having briefs through for Cougar or a, or a, um, um, or a Helen Mirren lookalike or a George Clooney lookalike. That's all I get. Um, and it's dull. Um, and I don't know whether it's coming from the clients and the brands, whether it's coming from I the casting directors. Yeah, it would be great to have an ageless brief um, as long as that brief really is looking at the character, the visual aesthetic character of the person. Because, you know, pretty and good looking has become so two dimensional <coughs> over the last 30 years. You know, the, the perception of beauty is, you know, youth, flawless skin, skinny and tall. And although on the catwalk, you know, you have to fit the sizes of, of the clothes are on there and it has to look uniform in order to show the variation in styling, you don't have to have that off the catwalk. Um, and, you know, the, my whole approach with grey is not to have lots of old ladies and stereotypes and archetypes. I don't want an agency of cougars and George Clooney lookalikes and then on the other side with the characters have, you know, typical, stereotypical old ladies or frail old men. 
um, you know, I want to show and am, believe I am showing um, the true range of people who are aspirational to this demographic. The people who are out there doing, getting, they're not caught up with consumerism like, you know, perhaps the, the actual marketing people are. They're not caught up in money alone. They're caught up in having an experience. And I disagree with you. I think that, you know, if you're going to um, reach this demographic and make them stop yawning at these ads and marketing promotions that you're doing, then you need to capture their... Um, you know, their creativity, their interest by doing something fresh and new, which maybe shows somebody who happens to be 50, 60, 70, 80, or 90, doing something that, you know, for the last 30, 40 years has only been given to a model, actor, actress of 25, 35. I think, I think the briefing has quite a bit to answer for. Mm. Because as you say... Uh, what happens with, with briefs is that it's just easier to explain something or to put an, uh, an age number down mm -hmm. rather than to try to express uh, an attitude yeah. or uh, an interest that somebody's going to have, a motivation. But the really good marketing is the, is the stuff that's based on the latter rather than the, the age of the person. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the getting advertising briefs, and I know that advertising agencies struggle <coughs> because clients in the last 15 years um, think that they're the creative team um, and don't allow the creative teams to flex their muscles and do what they're good at and what their minds are for. And there's huge amounts of frustration within advertising agencies for this. I think you'll agree. Um, I've been hearing it for years. Um, you know, brands need to let go and let the creative minds do their job and come up with the kind of adverts that we were seeing 20, 30 years ago, which did push the boundaries, which were edgy, which did play with stereotypes, turn them on their head. Got to stop being safe. I think we need more diversity as well within across you know clients yeah. and, and that means not just age but gender and race you know I think we need to just have a much broader pool of creative talent because otherwise you're just as you say you know you're a 25 year old imagining what it feels like exactly to be 50 and or that's not and not anywhere near the yeah. same but it's interesting somebody's asked a question about um, uh, Japan and it, in the beauty industry we are so very much following Korea and Japan. Um, in terms of skincare and beauty and attitude fashion. and fashion. And I, I do think that it, they say it takes eight years for a trend to cross um, from uh, Asia to uh, the UK and the US. But if you just look at in America, Sephora and in the UK, the various outlets, there are more and more Korean brands starting to pop up. And this is a very, very interesting because eventually... Uh, you know, not only the products will um, start to arrive, but also an attitude, and part of that attitude has arrived already, which is doing a multiple uh, skincare routine so that your skin looks absolutely flawless at any age. It's not about looking younger, it's just about having this sort of amazingly uh, bright and fresh skin and clear, bright, bright, fresh skin looks wonderful no matter what your age is. So I do believe, that's such a good point, I do believe eventually some of the attitude rather than just the product yeah. will land on our shores. Okay. There's well, an interesting exchange actually between East and West. I have a model out in Indonesia at the moment. Um, she was walking at Jakarta Fashion Week and she's about to walk for the one of the premium fashion designers over there next month. Um, and so the exchange with fashion is on the catwalk, they are peddling the 15 to 22 year olds, as we have seen here and in New York and Europe um, for 20, 30 years. But Alex is 56 and she has silver hair, long hair. She's gorgeous, she's Italian. Um, and I don't know whether it takes seven years or, or whatever period, because in the time that she's been there, they have changed their format. She's now doing an advert, she's wearing the new collection from this designer, and she's now completed three catwalks, none of which were organised before she arrived. 
So they are recognizing that London is a forerunner in the mature model, you know, kind of push. Um, and they're adapting quickly. And I think that's the difference between what's happening in the Far East and here, is that they are adapting to suit the market and feed the market. We're not. We're just standing still and we're kind of like 10, 20 years. So okay, I need to ask beyond. this because it's been the most popular question for quite a long time and we're running out of time. So very quickly, um, which brand's doing this well right now? Rosie? just mentioned um, Marks and Spencer's, which yeah. I think are doing it really well. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of, I did kind of have a little scout around and go, who's doing it? And you come up with things like Harley Davidson, which are actually appealing to sort of older guys. And there was a great ad in LA um, for Toyota, which had a, uh, you know, um, a girl, sort of middle, you know, 30-something girl on a computer, sort of slagging off her parents because they didn't have any Facebook friends and they, and they needed to get a life. And in the background, you see her parents meeting up with all the friends, <laughs> cycling, having a great time. And, you know, I thought that was a really smart, fun way. OK, I was going to put in a mention for the uh, P&O campaign with Rob Brighton, which is up uh, uh -huh. for an award here. And I think they have successfully managed to make him into ordinary bloke rather than old bloke. And I think that that works quite well in a quite dodgy area cruising where you're expecting it to be all about age, but I think they've, they've managed not to do that. Jane? I actually can't really say um, anyone in the beauty industry is doing it very well because they just can't resist the airbrush. They get so near and then they just spray <laughs> it all over. They can't help themselves. Rebecca? Um, I can't think of one. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a dreary <laughs> note to end on. But anyway, <laughs> Rebecca, Jane, Michael, Rosie, thank you so much. Thank you all for coming.